I want to talk about security operations or SecOps activities and organization functions. Now, effective security operations, as you know, is focused on managing risk of active attackers in the environment. And this is often done with a blend of really three things. One, reactive incident activities. Two, proactive hunting and alert tuning activities. And three, critical support functions that links technical operations back to the business. Now, the assignment of responsibilities to individual people and teams will often vary based on organization size and other factors. But security operations is composed of several distinct functions. Now, each function and team has a primary focus area, but they also must collaborate closely with other teams in order to be effective. Now, I'm going to show you a diagram here in just a moment, and this will depict a full model with fully staffed teams. But it's important to note that in smaller organizations, these functions are often combined into a single role or a single team, and it might be performed by, say, IT operations or performed by maybe uh, an outsourced vendor. Now, it's really important that I note that we primarily refer to analysts by the team name and not tier numbers, as these teams each have unique specialized skills and they're not a literal ranking. So let's start with triage and automation. Now, this is the handling of reactive alerts and it starts with automation and that's the near real-time resolution of known incident types with automation. These are well-defined attacks that the organization has seen many times. Now, the triage team, or also known as Tier 1, these analysts focus on rapid remediation of a high volume of well-known incident types that still require quick human judgment. And these are often tasked with approving automated remediation workflows and identifying anything that might be anomalous or interesting that would warrant escalation or maybe consultation with the investigation team or Tier 2 team. Now, speaking of that tier two team or that investigation team, this is where that team serves as an escalation point, as I mentioned, for issues that are coming from that triage team. And they also directly monitor alerts and that might indicate a more sophisticated attacker that trigger maybe behavioral alerts or special case alerts related to business critical assets and monitoring for ongoing attack campaigns. Now, proactively, this team also periodically reviews the triage team's alert queue, and they may also proactively hunt using maybe XDR tools in their spare time. Now, this team provides deeper investigation into a lower volume of more complex attacks and often multi-stage attacks that are conducted by, say, human attack operators. This team might pilot new and unfamiliar alert types to document processes for the triage team, maybe improve automation, and often including alerts that might, might be generated by other tools. Now, there's a great blog out there at Microsoft.com called Day in the Life of an Analyst. I'll put a link down below that talks a little bit more about this team. Now, you see that incident management team there. That team takes on the non-technical aspects of managing security incidents, including coordination with other teams like the communications team, legal, leadership, and other business stakeholders. Now, as we go up here, there is a third team, Tier 3, known as the Hunt Incident Management Team. And this is a multidisciplinary team focused on identifying attackers that may have slipped through the reactive detections and handling major business impact and events. Now, on the Hunt side, this team proactively hunts for undetected threats, assist with es escalations and advanced forensics for reactive investigations, and they also, again, help to refine alerts and automation. Now, these teams operate in a more of a hypothesis-driven model than a reactive alert model, and are also where red and purple teams connect with security operations. Now, for more information here, again, there's another great blog called Zen and the Art of Threat Hunting out on Microsoft.com. I'll put a link down below. Now, there's another team here called the Threat Intelligence Team, and this team provides more context and insights to support all the other functions, often using a threat intelligence platform. Now, this can include many different faucets, including things like reactive technical research for active incidents, proactive technical research into attacker groups and attack trends and high-profile attacks and emerging techniques, but also strategic analysis and research and insights to inform the business and technical processes. It even helps set priorities. And they do so much more as well. Now, 
This diagram was developed by my good friend Mark Simos at Microsoft, and it's part of the Microsoft Cybersecurity Reference Architecture. I'll put a link down below to where you can download it. But special thanks to Mark here. Great job putting this together. Now, this was also developed you know, by Mark, but also in partnership with the Microsoft Cyber Defense Operations Center, Microsoft's SOC. And so on the right side there, you'll see some of the alert ratio and some information around how the CDOC is doing this. But it's really important to note that this is an example of how you can structure your security operations organization in order to be effective against today's most complex uh, attacks. So if you found value in this video, please give me a thumbs up and be sure to click subscribe. It does help me out, but I also have more videos on these topics coming, so stay tuned. All right, everybody. Well, hey, take care, and we'll see you in the next video.